Stockpile is a fun and fast stock trading game and we're going to go over the digital tutorial today to teach you how to play. Thanks for joining us on Legendary Tactics. Now I have very fond memories of this game because we actually bought this for Flash uh, or the first time we'd gone to Gen Con back in 2016 uh, when this game I think was was pretty new. And there's a digital implementation that I only had a vague idea about, but um, I managed to uh, acquire that recently, and uh, I'm going to show you how to play. Um, this is a, a, a fun little game. It's I, not a massive fan of the tutorial, but um, it's not a complicated game, uh, and so I'm I'm you know comfortable kind of guiding through gu guiding you through the tutorial and and kind of hopefully filling in some gaps. Um, and uh, giving you a, a better insight on uh, how to play this uh, this fun little game. So um, the uh, the tutorials is uh, the kind where you basically have to read and plow through a lot of somewhat comical uh, dialogue between uh, two characters here. Um, but if you've played a game like Stock Ticker or something like that, you might have an idea of, of a little bit of how this plays. It is actually quite different in many ways from, from Stock Ticker, which is quite a basic game. Um, but the general concept is the same, but they, they add some more layers, which is, uh, which is really fun. So, um, so in this, uh, they start you with $20,000 and, uh, the goal is to have the most money at the end of the, uh, at the end of the game, which is pretty standard for these kind of things. Um, so this here is the basic stock board. Okay. And it shows the, the stock values. Um, and the companies all have names, but it's going to be important for you to just learn the icons uh, initially anyway, and you know everything will become more uh, familiar to you. Um, there is a more advanced uh, stock board as well, which uh, I'll get into towards the end of this video. So um, these are the companies that we're going to be uh, um, you know buying and selling. So they're just going to zip through uh, uh, this, and and just remember that for each company like Cosmic uh, Computers um, and uh, so forth, bottom line bank, <laughs> there's only 10 shares per uh, company. So that's the most you can buy. Um, and uh, at the moment, as you can see, everything is, the stock value is uh, right in the middle. Um, American Automotive, Stanford Steel, and Epic Electric. All right. So um, now the, you do need to be very conscious of uh, trading fees. Um, so you have to pay these fees whether you uh, gain or lose uh, money in the market. So um, that is something that you, uh, you need to keep in mind. And the fees are going to be either 1000 2000 or 3000 So um, And each fee value will show up four times and they get paid immediately. All right. So in this case, we're, <laughs> we're paying a bunch of them. All right, and um, we also get, um, you know, again, this happens four times each. Um, we use our influence to move the market up or down, and you've got uh, booms or bust, stock booms or bust cards, and you can apply them uh, to uh, the companies that you would, uh, you'd like to influence. And uh, this is the stock bust card, okay? So, when you when the way the tutorial works is um, you uh, click on the icon on the card and you then click on the stock icon. So as I said, you're going to want to. I don't know if you need to know the names per se, but you certainly need to remember the the icons and, <laughs> and that sort of thing. Um, but everything does flow once you uh, get a bit more practice. So we're going to tank Stanford uh, Steel and uh, we're going to raise the value of leading laboratories, which is this one here. And uh, that boosts by two, so that's great. So um, as I said before, the stocks uh, each have 10 share cards and there are four cards of booms, four cards of busts. Uh, the trading fees have four cards each. And when you add up all of those, you get a, an 80 card market deck. So um, that is the you know, basically the breakdown of the market deck that's going to be central to the game. So, all right. And um, now we we are going to look at, you know, speculating as to whether the 
um, the stocks are going to go up and down. And so everyone knows the, the forecast of the market, but you don't know which company will be affected by that. So, um, so we, every round um, has these forecast values. You can see them highlighted up here at the top. Uh, you've either got down by two or three. You got paid dividends of two uh, two thousand dollars and stock increase by one, two, and four. So these, if you'll notice, that matches the number of, of stocks. So these are going to be applied one to one per uh, one of these per is going to be applied to each of the the, the stocks. Um, now it gets a little more interesting with the um, you know with the advanced stock board in the expansion. But uh, we'll just start with this. So, um, and everyone knows one company and its forecasted value. So uh, this is kind of public information. We know Cosmic Computers is is going to go down by two positions. All right, and we also have one hidden information pairing of a company and its and its forecast. So we can use this information to uh, know in advance. Uh, what's going to happen and we can bluff uh, as far as the you know buying and selling and bidding on stockpiles and stuff so um, so we yeah we know now because the um, these the two uh, negative uh, out of the out of the six um, forecasts uh, are down so we know every other company is scheduled to either pay a, a dividend or to go up in value so that's good to know because remember the this one here, the flashing one here, is is hidden information. That's something that only we are aware of. So, um, as the these two these two um, companies, Cosmic Computers, the blue one, and the yellow, Epic Electric, are on the value of two. So they're hovering right above uh, going bankrupt. All right. If you remember from stock ticker, that always happened if the market value went down to zero, that went bankrupt. And if it went to the very, very top, it, it would split. It's the same idea here. So we know that at the end of the round, Cosmic Computers and Epic Electric are going to uh, to be bankrupt. So um, you got to be. Yeah. And this is just an illustration <laughs> of all the stocks and everything going into the garbage, <laughs> which is essentially what it's worth. Uh, at that point, and once it is, uh, once it goes bankrupt, it will return to the midpoint again, um, and that's similar to stock ticker, actually, if you remember. Uh, so uh, that is uh, what happens when they go bankrupt. Now, it's um, there's also the this the split as well. So. Um, all right, and so we reveal next that Leading Laboratory pays out $2,000 in dividends per stock owned, All right? So the more shares you have of that particular stock, the more money you make, all right? And uh, so we, you know, basically we had uh, uh, um, a split. Um, it's in the stock port, sorry, it's, you can see that we got 4,000 instead of 2,000. So the the leading laboratory stock card is in your split portfolio, um, which is uh, basically because it's split, they, each one counts as two shares instead of one. And we'll, we'll cover that in a sec here. Okay, so automobiles go up by uh, one here, the uh, uh, American automobiles. Okay, and bottom line bank is up two. So this um, returns, uh, once it splits, it doesn't go back to five, it goes back to six. And the stock card moves to that split portfolio area. So, um, if you uh, have it in the split portfolio, then um, uh, you gain a, will just gain a ten thousand dollars bonus per card. Okay, so you can see it goes up by two here. So the stock splits, um, which has a neat little graphic. All right, and splits are good. You get t two shares. Uh, for every one share you have, you get essentially double and the value goes down to six. So, um, and then if the growth is um, greater than the, the split value, then it carries over into the next um, uh, into the next spot. So you can see here, I'll show you this. Uh, Stanford Steel is at, at 10,000 and it's gonna gain four positions in value. So we increase it by one, we split it. So we you know move back to the six. Okay, so it goes up by four, it splits, and we get the 
Neat little div dividing graphic again. Our Stanford Steel moves over to the split uh, area. It goes back to six, but remember we drew a plus four, so it actually continues that momentum, goes up to nine. So that's uh, uh, very good. Splits are always good in any in any stock trading game. So, all right, we're just gonna zip through the seven game phases. Um, and I'll just pause here very quickly. Um, hopefully you're you're getting some value out of this tutorial and, and you can uh, take a moment to like and subscribe, maybe even comment down below. Um, the other thing I wanna say is that don't worry if this seems a little bit um, complicated at this time. I think you'll find once you get in, into it, the gameplay is actually you know, much more straightforward. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I'm not a massive fan of this tutorial. It's it's adequate, but um, I think it uh, it's one of these games that you just really have to play. All right, so bear with me, and uh, we'll be doing some more playthroughs and and stuff uh, on here on Legendary Tactics at a later point. Um, so we have seven phases here, at least in the basic game. We've got the information phase when the forecasts are revealed, the supply phase. Um, where we place the stocks in the stockpile, stockpiles. That'll that that part's coming up in a in a, in a moment. Uh, demand phase: the players bid on the stockpiles. Action phase: when you play your boom and bust cards. Selling is when you sell your stocks at the market uh, price. And the end of round uh, when the stocks actually move. All right. So what we showed you already was the information phase. So you get one public company forecast and a set of private in inside information. So um, and every player gets a different hidden information company forecast that changes every round. OK, so the public one is that um, Cosmic Computers is going to play uh, is going to pay a dividend. Um, and we also know that uh, uh, this one, the lab, the lab one, I think it's called is um, is going to go down by three. So um, so we get a, basically we, we create a stockpile, okay? And these are uh, one pile per uh, player, um, one stockpile per player. So you get uh, one market deck card to start that just goes into the, uh, into the mix, okay? And uh, you know, so this is a, bu uh, a bust card and uh, um, you can see cosmic computers here and everything. So, um, and then you get two cards to place. And they could be stocks, fees, boom bust actions, whatever. And you have to place one card face up and the other card face down. So you can put them in the same or different piles. So you'll see uh, he's going to place one mysterious one. You can see and they've got the, uh, the, the stock ones there. So you'll notice the initial cards have no color ring around them because those are the ones that were dealt by the, by the market deck. Um, and then the ones with the blue ring belong to this uh, this blue player the green ones belong to the um, you know to the uh, the um, this guy here um, not Montgomery the other guy uh, Rudolph sorry <laughs> and so uh, anyway so you get some information but there's gonna be some hidden information and so this is where you can really bluff because you do have some market information as far as who's gonna pay a dividend and if a stock's gonna go down and so you have to uh, decide what you're going to do uh, in terms of hiding that information and making a stockpile that's going to be, you know, intriguing enough for people to bid on, even if they, you know, even if it uh, might not be as good a stockpile that they're getting, as, you know, it, they get them to overpay for something that isn't that great. So um, as far as the hidden card goes, just click on the one that you want it to, that you want to be hidden. And then um, we're going to drag this uh, hidden card to stockpile two. Okay. And uh, we go, we're going to, um, uh, you know, drag the, the uh, American Automotive card to the three pile. They just want to say that it's, uh, it's on the online here, or sorry, the digital version here, if you click the eyeball, it, it allows you to see the board because it can be a little bit cluttered. Uh, so just click there. I'm going to drag this one here. All right. And then uh, bid on the stockpiles created during the supply phase. You can see um, there's some hidden information, as I said, but um, you know it's really up to you what you think it's worth. So 
Um, so we'll use the hidden information to grab the best value. The bid amounts are 0, 1,000, 3, 6, 10, 15, 20, and 25,000. But one player is going to get a pile for free, all right, depending on how the bidding goes. And so you can bid 0 on an empty pile, um, even if your money is below 0. So this, this guy liked the idea of buying uh, those, uh, that stockpile there. Um, Rudolph bids 0. And we say, well, I kind of like that. There's some hidden information there, but um, I think that we're going to uh, uh, bid on, uh, outbid Rudolph here. So we're going to select this one and we're going to bid 3,000 for the stockpile. And then Rudolph decides to bid uh, uh, an outbid Montgomery. So Montgomery is going to take the last stockpile for zero. Um, and so once that's set, then that's the bidding done. So, you know, once you have, uh, if you don't have a, a player that's outbid, then that's the end of the, the trading. So, and uh, so if players outbid, they'll bid again in turn order. And since we all have our own stockpile, that is it. So we just have to pay um, our bid amount and any trading fees uh, required. All right. And uh, so you can see there's some trading fees being applied and everything. And uh, so, so, yeah, sometimes you get dinged, you buy the, the, the face down card and you got to pay some fees. <laughs> so um, so if there's anyone that received a boom or bust card, they're required to uh, use it now. Um, this, uh, this guy, Montgomery, being very cruel, decides to bankrupt the cosmic uh, computers. And so everything there gets uh, trashed. And... Uh, it's unfortunate, but <laughs> there you are. Um, so all the stock goes back in and, and basically everything's lost. So, um, and then during the selling phase, now we can uh, choose to buy or sell stock. And so Montgomery is gonna uh, do something. So he's gonna buy three stair shares of Stanford uh, Steel, one regular share and one split. Or sorry, sell sorry, selling three shares of Stanford Steel, one regular share and one split. So someone has some information <laughs> on that. So uh, <clears throat> Rudolph is also going to sell, um, you know, just to make sure that they uh, are out of that um, market. And then just looking at our portfolio here, maybe we'll, we'll sell one of these uh, here. Um, uh, let's, let's see, yeah, we'll sell that guy, I guess. All right. Um, and it, yeah, anyway, you can drag it from your portfolio to the selling areas for split or single share uh, areas. So uh, we'll just keep that. That's fine just for now. Okay. <clears throat> and then we make some money on that 5,000. So, because that's what it's worth. So, so now we move to the sixth phase uh, movement. So all hidden information is revealed and all stocks change their values based on the uh, forecast. So the first, the dividend uh, uh, pays out on that one, but there's no one that owns it. This one goes up by four. So he's happy about that. <clears throat> that one goes down by three. Oh boy, I should have sold, should have sold more. Um, then this goes uh, up by two, down by two, and the last one, of course, will be up by one. And so the stock uh, uh, prices change. Yeah, he says, I want to sell, but yes, it's too late. Um, okay, so the final phase is round end. Um, with the expansion rules, there's a few other things with investors and, and bonds and so forth, uh, which we will touch on very quickly. But um, basically, the next player in turn order receives the, uh, the first player token uh, for the round, and then things continue. So you can see there's a little icon on Rudolph there that is the first player token. Um, and then at, at, the, um, at the end, um, all stocks will be sold at... Uh, the final price and whoever has the most money uh, wins. So um, that's pretty, uh, you know, pretty useful. So now it is, you do get a bonus as well that if you are the player with the most stock shares, including splits, uh, in each company gets a $10,000 bonus. If there's a tie, each player gets 5,000 instead. All right, so that is that is the uh, the basic game, actually. Um, and then the expansion just adds a, a, another couple layers. And this is the uh, advanced stock board. So you'll see that the split uh, values and bankruptcy values are actually 
for some like cosmic computers, it can split very easily, uh, but it can also go bankrupt just as easily as well. So you have some uh, which are on a traditional kind of longer track and then other ones which are um, a little more risky in that sense. So it's kind of neat how they, uh, the simple mechanics, but it can add a lot of strategic depth to the game. So, um, so the, uh, you know, you, you know, it depends on what kind of investor you are and uh, and uh, your personal style of play. Now, you also get a little investor character um, as well. Um, so there, these are two uh, investors that you can start with. So Mayno Martha can uh, look at another player's company card and forecast card uh, once per round. And uh, Wise Warren can look at all the face down uh, cards in a single stockpile um, before the demand phase. And this is also their starting, uh, starting money. So we're gonna choose Mayno uh, Martha. And so we start with 22,000. And uh, so there's also an investor encyclopedia, um, which is uh, something where you can, um, you know, view all the different uh, type of, uh, um, all the all the different investors in the uh, in the game. So, all right, and then we've also got bonds. Now, bonds uh, the price per bond is based on the number of players. So, the more players, the less expensive they are, and they pay interest uh, per bond at the end of each round. So, they return value to you, and uh, at the end of the game, they're just sold back for the the amount that you paid for. Um, or amount you paid for them. So um, they're uh, pretty straightforward. So there's a, a bond button up at the top here. And um, again, you can open that table and uh, we're gonna select two bonds. So we're gonna spend 12K on that. And uh, we'll just uh, add those bonds to our, uh, our situation. So that uh, happens after right here where it's uh, uh, this is where you would uh, buy the bonds at this. So, so after bond buying and before you get hidden information, you can also use the forecast dice to change the standard ones and make them random for each round. So this gives a little bit more variability um, than the, the more traditional, um, the, the ones that the icons that you're used to, the forecast values that you're used to. So they, uh, they roll the dice here and this is um, an example of uh, how what a great market would look like. You can see lots of ups. So there's a, a dividend 3,000, down one, down two, plus one, plus three, and plus five. So that is a pretty good uh, market. Now here's an example of another extreme, what a, what a bad market could look like, okay? So uh, now after those values are created, they're matched up with the companies as usual. And uh, the last layer that they add is six different commodities and seven tax cards during the supply phase. And so the pip marks on the table show how many of, of each commodity are in the game, um, with four pips meaning four cards. I'll show you what that means in a sec. Um, and so there are cattle. There are There is corn. Sorry, I can't speed this part up. <laughs> it just is going to display at its own speed. Uh, we have gold, natural gas. Oil, platinum, and there are the taxes right there. So those are added to the uh, the deck. So uh, the uh, the commodity and tax cards are then going to be placed just like stock cards during a second supply phase. Okay, and the cards will be face up. At the game's end, you earn money for having unique sets of commodities, um, and duplicate uh, commodities start a new set. So you can see here, this is the value. Okay, there are the pips. So you can see four cattle, four corn, right? Three natural gas. So the, these, that's the number of cards that you have available. And based on the combinations that you have, if you happen to have one of each, that's worth $48,000 there. So, um, and these are the tax cards, okay? And this is, uh, um, you know, based on how many uh, you have uh, collected of these, then you pay the uh, the tax uh, on those. So, you know, it's going to be a bit of a balancing act going for uh, going for sets and trying to uh, uh, make sure that you're uh, being very efficient with that. <laughs> so, 
Um, anyway, so that's the uh, just the summary of the tax cards there. And again, these are things that you know if you if you play, you'll kind of get a feel for how it works. It's once you played a couple of games, you, I, th I think you'll have a real handle on it but i would suggest learning the basic game don't start out with all the commodities and everything get to know the basic game first um i would say uh, probably after two games you should be pretty okay with how it how it's working and then uh, you can add the additional complexity if you like um so uh, Mano martha um, in order to use a special ability then you just drag and drop the eyeball um, over so our we can know someone's hidden info so um, we can uh, view the information there. So, and uh, so that's pretty straightforward. And uh, so that is, uh, yeah. So the last rule is is uh, again this is we already kind of covered this, but um, at the beginning you get two investors. You pick one, um, and then you uh, uh, bid on on which investor to hire. So uh, this is. Uh, where you pay for your investor, you know, with the with your starting uh, money, and uh, yeah, that's the last rule there. So, uh, again, just a quick skim through of the of the tutorial. I know that uh, we're going to do some uh, some playthroughs and that sort of thing, so you can get a better sense of of how to play. Uh, this game is is um, better played, uh, you know, and learned that way, as I said uh, many times. Um, but it is a fun game. We've uh, we've played quite a few games of this, and uh, it's it's um, it's something that's that's just a fun uh, you know venture into the into the uh, stock market trading type game that isn't stock ticker. Which I mean, I have a certain amount of affection for stock ticker, but the mechanics of that are pretty old school, and I don't feel that it holds up uh, very well. Um, this one is a, a fresh spin on the. Uh, on the topic. So anyway, I hope you got some value out of this video. And uh, if you did, again, please like and subscribe down below. Thanks so much for watching. This is NATO with Legendary Tactics.